Welcome back. We're about to get into some Bryce love, but first, a pop from the Matt Foreman. Oh, see, I knew, I knew you let yeah, the gas there was out. A, there was a pre-crack it wasn't, there. It wasn't bad. You let the first part of the gas out. You got excited before we hit record. But the initial, the, the second was, wasn't terrible. Had some had some good bass in it. But can I say, this is a fantastic brew dog <laughs> from Revelry Brew <laughs> Company. They make a f- fantastic beer. This is a Lefty Lucy IPA. West Coast style. Yeah, West Coast. 7% alcohol by volume. They're they're doing a they're doing a good job over there. ABV, strong sponsor. Um, we discussed Brewdog at the break. Yeah, we're not sure about it. We went to Brad. He said as long as you have two for your crew, it's all right. <laughs> it's Brad Keselowski, the cardboard cutout member of our team right. here. Yep. If you didn't Obviously. know, Obvi. If you weren't sure, you got a crack for us. You got a redemption. Ooh yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, oh, that was strong. good. That a was swift good. Pop. That was good. Even got on the mixer a little. You know, I like it when it uh, <laughs> when it excretes from its can. Eight point one. Now Ooh, that is eight point one. Whoa, oh, that might be the highest ever. Would you look at that? What do you, What would you rate yourself on that that crack you did? Uh, Four point three. Four point three. Definitely sub fair. five. That's fair. Yeah. I, I'll give you. I'll go seven eight on that crack. Seven that was eight. Pretty good. That was pretty good. What the hell? I like it. Can't I'll find a good soundbite for that. I see you. I, I know. I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't uh, I don't have anything. All right. Well, welcome back. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. You can find myself at IMC Myers. And you can find Matt Foreman at Fat Mormon on via the Twitters. Or Now, is that fat with a PH? <laughs> no, it's fat with an F. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Matt Foreman, but it's the F and the M switched. Right. It's genius. It's a great Twitter handle. It's strong. I love it. Strong. So Fat Mormon on Twitter, or you can just sort search Matt, Matt, Matt Foreman. Foreman. Yeah, I'll come and, up. And find old uh, <laughs> old Christian Hackenberg over here. <laughs> All right. My uh, my best friends call me Uncle Mattster. Uncle Mattster. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> We're going to have to take another break and discuss that. <laughs> Just we'll, table, we'll table that discussion. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to get into some Bryce Love. I know not quite as fun as Miles Sanders here, but I do think this could be a uh, nice a little value diamond. pick for you later in the... Uh, yeah, what are you going to go into ladder? Rough. Yeah. <laughs> Had some nieces in town not too long ago. Did a, Did a circle nice, of all the... Yeah, I mean, plus it's relevant. It's coming back out. Oh, yeah. Got for Will sure. Smith as a genie. I don't know if he can live up to Robin, but... He can't. No, this is that... Uh, I when, mean, is he going to rap? Is he going to write he, his own music like Robin Williams did? I don't know. That's probably not going to happen. Hmm. When he when when Robin Williams first comes out of that lamp off the rip when they're in that cave, he's like, 10,000 years it's will give you such a crick in the neck. <laughs> it's so strong. Just so good. Ah, One of the best movies. And, you know, I like that Princess Jasmine. That was like the turn of Disney being super sexist like they stop finally right and instead of like this damsel in distress that just needs a prince to rescue her she wasn't playing any games she didn't want none of those princes nah she was not a prize to be won nah she just wanted a regular dude who was a nice guy right and then he tried to be something he wasn't and she wasn't feeling it Mm-mm. went back to being the street rat that he was and she was dig- digging it See? and then she still got to choose in the end way to go disney you're a little slow but you came around and now now all the disney movies have got Heroin. Just keep, just keep being a hood rat, and you'll find a princess. Street rat. I just, like doing, I just like doing hood rat things, with my friends. That's right. Street That's right. rat. It's not hood rat. Well, whatever. <laughs> hood rat. Street rat. <laughs> just don't get caught stealing and lose a hand. It's true. Bryce Love would never steal. He would not. He's a kind and decent man. Big fan of academia. Wants to be a doctor when he gets older. Majored in biology. I thought you said he didn't have any bio. Uh, bio I mean, on, uh, everyone knows that. He wants some, to people, have, some people even question how much he wanted to play football. Oh, because he wants med school. Because huh? he said he wanted to be a doctor after he was done playing football. I, I just see that as an outstanding human. Yeah. Want to help people. As long as he doesn't Chris Borland this thing and get out after a season. Mm, God, that was that's such a bummer for the San Niners. Fran, yeah. ah, really had a nice replacement for one of those linebackers. And then he sh- Navarre, just flew Bowman the coop. And, uh, Patrick Pat Willis. Willis. Yeah. Chris Borland really stepped in there. Great pick. And One year. One and done. Here. Didn't like the concussions. Navarro Bowman, Penn State. Oh. Would you look at that? Well, it all ties together. Bryce Love, former track phenom. Sure. Nicknamed a baby bolt. 
Well, I, I, before we go any further, I just I, I was watching High Noon last night at like it's replay at eleven thirty or whatever, which is uh, Bumani Jones and um, I thought you were talking about one of the um, Shanghai Noon. No, no, yeah. Bumani Jones and the I I, I don't want to say. He's Dan Asian. Levitard? The Asian guy. Uh, uh, what's, his, oh, wow. what's his? That was highly questionable. What's his? What's his cohort's name? I don't remember what his name is. Off the rip, but it was hilarious because there was this white dude who was running track who was so fast and none of the brothers could catch him, and then boys were just bugging out about it. And then at the very end, like you can't see what I'm doing right now, but the dude had the white dude had like kind of curly hair, and like they were leading out, and Bumani Jones is like they're like, but. But and Bumani was like doing like a signal with his hair like it was curly. He was like, I don't know. I don't know where that curly hair came from. It was, it was pretty funny. By the way, the guy on that show, he's Hispanic. It's Pablo Torre. Pablo looked Asian. Oh, he's from the Philippines. So they're um, I'm pretty sure he's from the Philippines. This so has a little Asian in there. Dick I'll, to do I'll take your word for it. All right. I love anyway. <laughs> You should it does go- look pretty Asian. I will give you. You that. should Google that high noon segment about the really fast track uh, guy in high school. It's hilarious. Well, a, another fast track guy in high school was Bryce Love. Converted, looked fast on the field. He is a game breaker. That is true. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> He's got a lot of R's. He's so fast. Yeah. He's. Uh, I don't know uh, what's not to like about Bryce Love. I guess it's the injury history. Well. Where yeah. do you want to take it? We, we can start there. The injury history is a little extensive. Uh, to, to start off... You I sped. I followed too closely. I <laughs> failed to yield the crosswalk. <laughs> I changed lanes at the intersection. I changed lanes without signaling. It's a little liar, liar. We're running around light blue. and speeding. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got it. So that you can you can definitely question some durability with Bryce Love. Um, and we'll, I'll let you read down the list of injuries, but... Um, I you really <laughs> you can't question any of the toughness toughness of the commitment to his team. He left games time and time again and came back looking. He could barely walk half the time leaving the field and coming back on the field. And then he would get back on the field and show little to no hobble. So you can talk shit about the durability and whether or not his frame at 5'8", 200 could handle of quote unquote load at the next level, which I don't think he'll ever really be asked to do. Phrasing. F- sure. But you, I don't think you can question the toughness or, or lack of commitment to what he wanted to do for his teammates. No, I mean, there, there is a, a decent injury history. In the, and even in so in 17, which is really the year you can point to when he had over 2,000 yards and was awesome, he was injured in that year as well. Uh, Guy was so, fighting through a high ankle sprain the latter part of the year. Right. He picked up an ankle injury. Uh, versus or He missed the game versus Oregon State. He re-injures that ankle multiple times, but like you said... Which is the only actual game that he misses in 17. Right. But, but While angle, stealing. Right. <laughs> speeding. Uh, so he just kept producing even though he just kept re-injuring that ankle. Like, as you said, he also had a thumb injury in 17 in the bowl game, which required stitches. Now, they insinuated that that happened during the fourth quarter in the medical tent, that that boy got stitches on his thumb, came back out, and finished the game. So that new Ronnie Lott. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. Ronnie Lott would have just cut it off. Exactly. (laughs) He uh, he injures that same left ankle from 17 again in 2018 versus Notre Dame, missed the following week versus Utah, um, and, and plays the rest of the year. And then obviously the big big one, the bummer, tears his ACL. In the in the 2018 season finale, so which could must, be part of the reason what's holding him so far down in ADP right now. Right, where where is he in ADP? Let me, I got that right here. Scroll down, keep scrolling down, way below Benny Snell at 31. Oh, so a mid second round pick. No, that's mid third, mid third, mid third. Yeah, all J. Yeah, for me too. Agreed. Um, we just jumped to the fantasy aspect. We did. Let's, way, let's way save quick. it. Let's save it. Um, <laughs> Reel it in. Let's talk about some other things this guy can do or can't do. So back to that Notre Dame game where he got injured. He, he left and came back and left and came back in that game. But there's he, he literally runs away from people in that game as well. Um, right. And you hear the announcers talk about how even on a bum leg, this dude is super fast. Right. 
Um, and then other people want to point to, you know, what could have happened from 17 to 18 and why was it so down? And well, the tape's miserable in 18. And I, I, I point to that Notre Dame game and say, well, he was banged up and he was still running away from elite competition. These are guys who j- played in the college football championship. This is a good team. And he was looking good. Like you just Dude. Give, all you got to do is give Bryce a sliver. And, and he's run, like not a lot of these players in this draft class are running away from people. Right. A lot of them. You can watch them get caught from behind. Bryce Love banged up is still running away from people. Right. He's a threat to house it from anywhere and there was tons of those runs in 17 i mean that 17 season was so ridiculous like let me just list off a few of the things like he just the way he was being regarded as a running back he was listed as an early day two prospect possibly a day one candidate after that 17 season should have miles sandered it he decides to go back to school he doesn't he decides to go back which was a total bummer for him because then he tears his acl and it's like He's nowhere to be heard of. When when he was a front runner for the Heisman coming into eighteen was seven to one odds that he was gonna win it. I think he he finished ahead of Barkley in the twenty seventeen Heisman, correct? He was second yep. to uh yeah. Baker Mayfield. Yeah, Barkley was fourth. Two thousand plus lo- uh yards. Yep. Yep. McShay projected him as a top eighteen pick. Kuiper had him as the number one overall running back. He averaged four point two eight yards after contact. He forced seventy six missed tackles uh on runs. Uh, everybody in the country had him as one of the best running backs in the right. country. Averaged over eight yards a carry. Right. Over 10 before he picked up that ankle injury. Right. So just was was a Daryl Henderson and... and um, right. Who's the guy from... He was a Rashad Penny and a Daryl Henderson. Yards after contact but, but, and yards per carry. But in a power carry. five school. Right. In and in a, much, in a much harder competition. In a pro-style offense between the tackles, and too. That, exactly. that knew that the, he was the offense. Like, he's coming at you. They're running big sets, doing all sorts of wild formations. Um, and then another thing that I don't think enough people take into uh, consideration here is from 17 uh, to 18 here, if you go to uh, Football Outsiders and look at all their offensive line... Uh, stats and efficiencies Um, in 17 they go from uh, being in adjusted yards there for their offensive running uh, their 74th Um, they go from uh, standard down line yards from 93 Uh, they go from passing down yards 72 Um, just Basically, uh, when you read across these stat lines for everything that their offensive line does, it's in the 70s, in the 70s, and then it's in the 49s, in the 49s, in the 40s, in the 22s. And then when you go down to the 18, everything's in the hundreds. So all of their efficiencies for their offensive line went way down. Like So just a much worse operating offensive line. Now, they did sign some big... Uh, offensive linemen, some of the best offensive linemen and recruits in the country to come to Stanford, but it didn't quite pan out for the 18 uh, offensive line, and they just weren't nearly as efficient. Now, is some of that Bryce Love being really good? For sure. But is some of it the line taking a step back? I think absolutely. So that's a big part of what happened when you, you can go look at the numbers yourself at Football Outsiders and look at the 17 to 18 efficiency metrics of what those lines did. And I mean, they're, they're not even close to each other. Like those are big differences when you're going from, um, you know, in one category, you're going from 74th to 114th and 72nd to 112th. Like those are big jumps. Um, so that, that, that could be something leading to some of the demise of Billy Mumphrey. And even even at seventy second, even where Love was at, that's a huge that's a huge testament to his skill level. Right. He was he was running as a top five running back. Right. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I mean we can get into some of the running game here. Yeah. I, I, I just of, wanted to point out that offensive line before we got into any of that other stuff. Yeah, because I mean the people want to hate about eighteen for sure. You're right. So that was part of the issue in eighteen was the down line play. Right. But, I mean, when you look at this guy from a running back perspective, I mean, he's got a lot of the things that you like. I mean, the only thing that you can say, in my opinion, is the, is the size. He's only 200 pounds, right? But that's, a, you know, he's 5'9 and 200. And I think he, he gained he gained weight. I think he came in at 186. And so he gained weight over the course of his career. And I, so I like seeing that. Um, and when you look at him as a running back, he's got he's got everything you want. I think he's got... Good pad level. The, the balance is there. Obviously, the speed and the threat to house it from anywhere. I, I like the vision. But to me, the thing that really 
is intriguing about him is he has those little subtle nuances behind the line of scrimmage that kind of like Josh Jacobs where he's got that patience and he'll change up his stride and he'll stretch runs out just long enough and he'll let things develop and let the blocks come in play. And, like, he just, to me, I like that. I, I, right. I just think it's – I think he's a really good running back. And I think it's a bummer for him that he tore his ACL and now he's just getting shat on and dropped down the ranks in the Which NFL and in fantasy. It's is good for everybody out there who wants to pay attention. And it, and it could even, you know, a lot of times you can take this as a negative for him personally, but it could be a positive of him landing in a better situation and on a better team that's more equipped to handle what Bryce Love can do rather than just being a higher pick and going to a needy team who might not be ready to use him to the best of his ability. Um I mean, so, he's he's not as far along in his rehab as, say, Rodney Anderson is. And I, I don't know that you're going to see – I would like to not see either one of these guys play in their first year. Like, he needs to get right. It's obvious that he wants to get out there for his team and play and he'll gut through injury and all that. But I would hope that he would, would sit and that you don't see anything from him for at least a year. And I so think he's definitely a pup candidate for the first six the first six weeks, for sure. Yeah, and I, th- I think he should be. I think you're absolutely right. I don't think he should – I think he should sit out for the entire year. I'm fine with Rodney Anderson. I'm fine with selecting him where I'm down with taking him and having him sit out. Just get right and and get back on the field. Right. Um, well, tell me some of what you saw from him as a running back, man. Well, I, I mean, when you you can knock him a little bit between the tackles, people people don't love it. And and can he can he sustain the durability thing through the being a, at the next level? Like, I don't think he's going to be asked to do what he was doing in college at the next level I, by any means. Um, but when you get in between the tackles, I mean, is it his game? Is it where he shines? No, but he's not really a liability or incapable of doing so. Um, so, I, again, I don't think he'll be an every down player at 5'9", 200. Um, but he certainly doesn't really... He's. You don't have to put him in there and be like, well, Bryce Love's coming in and there's no way they can run between the tackles. Like, I think he's capable of running between the tackles, but I don't think it's something that he absolutely... Uh, is incapable of doing so it's not like he's coming in and there's no way that this the play could be in this area is i guess more or less what i'm saying i think he's a really good plus athlete he has some good leg drive on some um sometimes on running through contacts and gaining extra yards good forward lean pretty good forward leans i mean i think you do see him go down on some first contacts he does provide examples of going down on some softer contacts um but i think that's what you see with a lot of these guys i guess it's it's consistency I think you see some really good stuff in, in kind of a power leg drive kind of game, and then you see some other times where he does go down a little easy. Uh, I think that's to be expected with a guy that's 5'9", maybe just barely 200 pounds. Sometimes he's running through those foot swipes and stepping over foot swipes, and other times a foot swipe might get him. Um, I, I think he's got a little bit of everything to get between the tackles, but I don't think it needs to be his game. It's not going to be his game. Um, but it's, it's certainly not like a liability. Do I think it should be celebrated at the next level? Absolutely not. But can he do it if he had to? I think he can. I, he doesn't need to run it between the tackles 12 times a game, 13, 14 times a game. But I think it's there to be had if you have to. Well, if he's not going to be running it more than 10 plus times a game, is can he make up for that in the receiving? Well, it's, it's not that I don't think that he can't like he shouldn't run it 10 times to 12 times a game but it just doesn't always need to, he doesn't need to be a between the tackle grinder to to be successful at the next level like he he's got a ton of athletic ability he's probably the fastest running back in this draft class if he was healthy so he, and like i said he just needs a little sliver and he, he's he's got plenty of lateral quickness he's got plenty of agility in the open field he's extremely explosive he's got good feet he's fluid he's kind of a slasher and he just really needs a crease and when he can go he runs away from people now will will he be able to run away from everybody in the nfl like he did in college a lot of times probably not he's gonna get tackled sometimes he'll certainly have opportunities to run away from people and score some longer touchdowns what do you guys think oh i think i think you're definitely right i think he's 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 more of a slasher type but but he even plays bigger than his five nine two hundred frames sometimes i mean He's not he's not a guy who's going to go down all the time at first contact but yeah he does go down a lot of time at first contact but I mean he plays bigger than his size yeah. at 59200. Look at him on the goal line like yeah he's really good at scoring like he can score from far out obviously but from those short yarded situations there's plenty of times watching him where you think he's about to be down and he spins out of it and gains a few more yards and scores like he it's almost like he wills himself into the end zone you got to yeah. like that. And he's patient enough to he's patient enough to 
to wait for that little crease to open up. And he's small enough where he can find that little 12 inch crease where he can just get his body through that to score a two, three yard touchdown. So I don't think being the smallest guy on the field is all the time that, that big of a hindrance for him. And I mean, he's, he's shown that he can be a productive player. And again, I don't, I don't think he's going to be a volume based player on the next level by any means, but he's got the huge athletic upside for that to be okay. Like if you miss on your Daryl Henderson, if you don't want to take justice Hill where you have to take him, like this is a good guy late in drafts to pick up. Maybe he has to sit on your practice squad for a year, but this is a plus athletic guy who, who could have a really good role in a really good situation. Right. Is a guy that finished second in the Heisman voting rushed for over 2000 yards. Like he's freaking good. I think, I think running through the tackles and running through contact and the pass pro are two things that when I watched it, I said there needs to be a little bit more consistency, but um, that, that's a lot of guys like the pass pro I'd again. It's, it's, I'd say it's above average. I would say with the pass pro. Yeah, I would say the willingness is there just needs to be more consistent with the approach. Agreed. You never see his QB sacked. For, uh, that's his fault. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think I think I think there is there's a lot of tape on him. So there's definitely some times that it says I think sometimes he steps up and seeks the the uh, penetrating player. and Other times he lets the lets him get in on him and is unsuccessful with his attempts. Um, and sometimes he may get a little lost in the shuffle and is kind of looking around for the guy he may have already let through. But I think there is some good tape on him getting in there and, and really getting up on the guy he's supposed to be on. Especially I don't, for a 200 pound back. I don't think he's a terrible pass protector. The willingness is there. And that's always something that you can build. Like not a lot of college players come in and are just gangbusters pass protecting. It's you, a willingness. You have his stats up here. And it's something I'm interested to see is that. He had 263 rushes in 2017, but he only had six receptions. What, yeah. What, what's well, the I deal? Mean, that, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I was thinking about that, and what I kind of came to in my own mind was that, I mean, it's a ton of attempts, and he was in and out of games banged up, so like they were trying to minimize his touches to just carries and probably not subject him to too well, much more. So, I mean, the year after that, he has 20 catches. Yeah, so. but he's he, he's so good in space. Right. Like, what is David Shaw doing there that he's not getting him in space? And He's a guy that you want to have him catching the ball where he is in space, and that doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's something I just something just came up while I was looking at that. There, like, why does he only have six catches in his most productive season in college football? Yeah, it's interesting. Definitely an interesting point. They do run this power pitch with this this like really oh what short, the hell is this power little, pitch? little power pitch which he probably called a hundred of those if you counted that so as a you pass ca- if you counted those as passes he, for sure yeah. he'd be he'd be way up there so I, I think it's kind of they run a lot of big sets like we said and with the power pitch he can kind of he gets to pick and choose kind of where he wants to go it's like the short little pitch um that right. he still has I guess to catch. it gives him more time so to pick and choose now where he, he wants. Now I he like can that. Kind of get to pick where he wants to go. Kind of like the pop pass in the NFL. A, a little bit, a little bit, sure. Um, but my my thoughts on the passing game is that he caught twenty balls this year. None of the other years he caught fifteen his his freshman season, eight and six the other years. So a grand total of forty nine catches. Nothing crazy, but but twenty catches this year isn't the worst. Here's the way I see it. Maybe he just wasn't using the passing game a lot. When I see him catch the ball, it's not terrible. I saw him catch every pass thrown at him. I know I saw. a lot of people get bent out of shape about how many catches you had and whether you can catch or not and blah, 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 blah. I think a guy, most of these guys, nine out of ten, eight out of, let's say eight out of ten of these running backs are uber athletic players that if you just give them a little time to throw the ball to them, they can catch. They're athletes. Like It's not like they're in cape, like. Some guys are incapable of catching. I've seen people who are incapable of catching footballs. A lot of these guys can catch footballs. I've seen Bryce Love catch footballs. It doesn't look bad by any means. I would say it just really wasn't his role. I think it will be a lot of his role at the next level. And I think a guy like him, is who's a really smart kid, who's a really hard worker, if you tell him that's what he's going to do and that's going to be a big part of his game, I can guarantee you that he's going to be out there catching the shit out of footballs and he'll be really good at it yeah. if that's what he has to do. He's not a dummy. He's not unathletic. And I've seen him catch the balls. Like I'm, I'm okay with, with kind of giving him a little bit of a pass. And, and what is David Shaw doing? Agreed to somewhat of why are you not getting him more than six receptions? in that great season that he had, but I, I, I'm, I'm willing to look a little past that. And plus you're getting this guy so cheap, but I do think the passing game will have to be something that is big for him at the next level. And I, I don't think there's any reason to believe that he can't do that. 
No, and I'm not saying you can't do it. It's just something. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I'm, I'm not saying you were. It's just like, wh- I mean, what's the deal there? But that could be on. It could be on David Scholl. It could be on KJ Costello. I, I mean, just he was wanna, open I just a who ton. That's on. Yeah. He was Which, open. Yeah. You could throw it to him. And Watch, I'm not a big KJ Costello fan I was about to say, either, and so. watching KJ Costello, is it's so up and down. It is not fun to watch the Stanford offense. That, that J.J. Arcega guy, though. Arcega white guy. Arcega, he's, he's not terrible to watch. But I love watching Caden Smith block somebody, too. He's, he's a guy who's a mauler as tight end. Nice little tight end name drop there. Yeah. You guys got any more on... Uh, Dalton Schultz show up in those. Yeah. You got any more on Bryce Love here? I think that's about it for me. Where should we talk about where to have him? I mean, he's just basically he's just cheap and he's free right him. now. And I, I'm I'm like a, like a Benny Snell, like how he's super late, and I'm down with having him everywhere. I'm down with having a polar opposite of of a of a Bryce Love everywhere. Like I'll I'll trade around and do what I can to get both of those guys on my team really late. I, I think this is like I said, if you miss on your Henderson or miss on your Justice Hill. I think this is a player that could be very similar. Like this is a guy who can be a gang gangbuster game breaker, bust long runs, super fast guy. I think he can catch the ball, and I think he's obviously a pretty decent runner of the football. I don't think the power game needs to be anything that you shy away from with him. I don't think it's going to be his calling card. But yeah, I mean, if if you can, if you would tell me right now that Bryce Love would have a Gio Bernard Gio Bernard career. And I could get him in the late third. I would be all over that all day, right? Because you're going to get a PPR running back to flex player, but what you're drafting him at that that's a steal in in, in the late third round. I, I agree, hundred percent. Jay Wayne, I'm I'm there. All right, we're there. Well, should we wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Always be sure to uh, wear a raincoat. <laughs> Old Jimmy thing. <laughs> You want to get us out of here? Are you going to get us out of here or what? Uh, uh, yeah. You're the get out guy. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe on any of your platforms of choice. Hit us up with a review. We'd love a five-star review on iTunes. That would be oh so kind of you. See those going up, so appreciate it. But there's still way more people listening to this show than have reviewed it. So you know who you are. Let me get that review. You don't even have to write anything anymore. Just click the five stars. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please. And... uh I don't know. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. Thanks, uh, Matt Foreman, for joining us. It was my pleasure. Oh, there we go. Nice. Nice way to end it. Shout out to Big Co. Shout out to Big Co. Had his baby taken. Little baby. A little new addition to the fam. Little Bradley. Dynasty Lil Co. Yeah. Yeah. Price almost bigger than Big Co already. Yeah, I thought Big Co would be a little bigger than this. <laughs> That's the first time I said when I saw him. It's one of my favorite quotes. All right, well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Till next week, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game. <laughs>